Hello everyone. All my dear students, today we are going to start a new topic and that topic is the sequential logic circuit. From that specially, we have to see, for now, we have to see the flip-flops. The flip-flops. The flip-flops are we also called as a one-bit memory cell. So we have to see the one-bit memory cell and the various types of the flip-flop but before that we have to see what is the sequential logic circuit if you will understand this video lecture then hit the like button subscribe the channel so we are going to study the sequential logic circuit the sequential logic logic circuit and a combinational logic circuit these are the two main types of the logic circuits the sequential logic circuits and the combinational logic circuit i think before we had seen the meaning of the sequential logic circuit and the combinational logic circuit but once again we recall the main difference in between the sequential logic circuit and the combinational logic circuit the combinational logic circuits are those circuit the combinational logic circuit combi national means here they in the circuit which works on the combination of the two input that circuit is we call as a combinational logic circuit and the sequential logic circuit is that logic circuit which works on the sequence and we know that for a sequence it requires a past history so we can say the logic circuit which works on the logic circuit which works on a memory or the past history that logic circuit is we call as a sequential logic circuit and a combinational logic circuit is that logic circuit which works on a combination of the inputs applied means here if we have a combinational logic circuit this one combinational logic circuit then this combination logic circuit having the two inputs these inputs are a input and the b input its output is supposed to be y then this output y is either equals to 0 or it is equals to 1 it depends on these two inputs a and b input so here it not required any pass history if we consider the sequential logic circuit then it requires the past history or the memory if we try to draw the block of the sequential logic circuit then here this is supposed to be a sequential logic circuits inputs are again a and b with this input there is one extra input that input is we call as history or that input is we call as a memory means the memory is required in the sequential logic circuit as it have to produce the output with the sequence so it requires the memory or the past history okay so this is the main difference between the sequential logic circuit and the combinational logic circuit the examples of the combinational logic circuits are the multiplexer then the demultiplexer multiplexer then demultiplexer d mux then the encoder then the decoder encoder and the decoder all these logic circuits we had seen before if you not seen the video lectures of this multiplexer demultiplexer encoder and decoder as well as how to design a logic circuit by using the multiplexer and demultiplexer all the videos are posted here at the i button i will provide the link of this all video or the playlist so these are the examples of the combinational logic circuit we have to see the sequential logic circuit for now and here some examples of the sequential logic circuit these examples are first one is the flip flop second one is the counter and third one is the register from this here the flip flop is a basic device flip flop is the basic device and 
if we use the number of flip flop in a combination then we can construct the counter and a register the register is a temporary storage device and for the temporary storage of for the temporary storage of the data here we use the registers and the counters we use for the counting of the clock pulses or we can say the counting of the frequency so here for now we have to consider the flip flop and the flip flops basic is one bit memory cell flip flop basic is one bit memory cell and before the one bit memory cell we have to see the multi vibrators why we call these are the flip flops okay so the multi vibrators are the three types of the multi vibrators as we know the oscillator produces the output that output is in a sine wave so the multi vibrators are like the oscillator but the difference is its output is the pulse wave or we can make its output as a square wave means here the output of this multi vibrator is different than the oscillator the circuitry are also they different than the oscillator here we can say the multi vibrator produces the output that outputs are the pulse wave output or in one multi vibrator we can produce the square wave output we can produce the square wave output okay so three types of the multi vibrators we have from that the first one is a stable multi vibrator in short we call it as amp if you need to know what is the multi vibrator in detail as well as if you have to note down the your notes then you visit our website i will provide the link of that particular post particular article about the multi vibrator in the description box as well as you can see here the name of our website okay so the multi vibrator having the three types first one is the a stable multi vibrator as its name indicates it is a stable means no one state is the stable state here the this a stable multi vibrator is we also called as a pre running multi vibrator it is we also called as pre running multi vibrator because here in a stable multi vibrator the output switches from high to low automatically without application of any input signal the second one is the mono stable multi vibrator mmv second one is the mono stable multi vibrator and the third one is the bi stable multi vibrator bmv the a stable multi vibrator is not having any stable state mono stable multi vibrator having one only one stable state the a stable is not having any stable state and mono stable having one stable state the third one is the bi stable means it have two stable states this bi stable multi vibrator is we also call as a flip flop means it have the two stable states its output if in the high state then it remains in the high state this is we call as a first stable state then if we need its output at the low state then we apply a one trigger then it remains in that state so it is we call as a bi stable multi vibrator the amv a stable multi vibrator mono stable multi vibrator and the bi stable multi vibrator these are the three types of the multi vibrator a stable multi vibrator is not having any stable state it is we call as a pre running multi vibrator second one is the mono stable multi vibrator here it is having only one stable state and third one is the bi stable multi vibrator it is having both the states are the stable state so here we have to see this specially a bi stable multi vibrator and that bi stable multi vibrator is having both the states are the stable the bi stable multi vibrator we can use as a flip flop so we have to see the types of the flip flop various types of the flip flop but before that we have to see 
the concept of the flip flop and that concept is the one bit memory cell okay so this is a logic circuit of one bit memory cell one bit here it stores a one binary bit so it is we call as one bit memory cell it stores a one binary bit only one binary bit so it is we call as one bit memory cell and here to construct this one bit memory cell we can use the inverters actually it is an ideal circuit to consider the concept of the flip flop so here we can use the two inverters here the inverters we use that inverters are the nor gate inverters that inverters are the nor gate inverters and here the two inverters are used instead of the nor gate inverter you can use the nand gate inverter here i use the nand gate inverter or you can use the not gate inverter if we consider the gate 1 having the output q this output q is applied as a input to the second gate and the output of the second gate that is the q bar is applied as a input to the first gate means here the two gates we are using these two gates are the inverter gates and the output of the first inverter is applied as a input to the second inverter and the output of the second inverter is applied as a input to the first inverter here this is the construction few things we have to note down about the one bit memory cell suppose here the output of suppose here the output of the first uh, first nand gate is equals to 1 the output of the first nand gate is equals to 1 then here this one is the output of the first gate may be equals to 1 or we can say it is high we use the word 1 and the high and 0 and the low though these two words are the same okay so consider when i am saying it is 1 means it is logically high and if i am saying the logically high or logically low means it is a binary 1 or binary 0 for high we use the binary 1 means digitally it is equals to 1 and when i am saying it is low means it should be a binary 0 okay so here the one bit memory cell we have and suppose its output is equals to q is equals to 1 the output of upper gate q is equals to 1 means output of upper gate q is high and see the q is applied as a input to the second gate and here as we know the output input to the inverter is high then its output is equals to low it means here we get the q bar is equals to 0 when this q bar we consider this q bar is connected as a input to this first gate so therefore here it, it again produces the inverted output and it is equals to 1 so therefore here we can say the q and q bar are always complement to each other the q and q bar are always complement to each other and here the q is equals to 1 and q bar is equals to 0 it means here this condition is we call as a set condition when the q is equals to 1 q bar is equals to 0 this condition is we call as a set condition and in set condition here we can say the input is already inserted the data is log and that data is equals to 1 okay when we consider the opposite outputs suppose here the q is equals to 0 q is equals to 0 and q bar is equals to 1 how q bar is equals to 1 see q we are considering the q is equals to 0 means the q is the input for the lower gate and lower gate is the inverter so it inverts the input at the output side it means here the q bar is equals to 1 
so q is equals to 0 q bar is equals to 1 and again we can say it is true that the output of the output of the one bit memory cell or the flip flop is always complement to each other in previous condition we had seen the q is equals to 1 so we got here the q bar is equals to 0 in this condition q is equals to 1 uh, q is equals to 0 so the q bar is equals to 1 it means that both q and q bar are always complement to each other and this thing you have to note down okay then here the some points we have collected here and these points are the output q and q bar are always complement to each other and this one bit memory cell is having the two stable states it have the two stable state which are those state high state and the low state for an example suppose the q is equals to 1 the q is equals to 1 this condition is what we call the set condition now it remains in the set condition until the output state is changed and output state is changed when the input is applied okay so this if it is in the set condition then it remains in the set condition this condition when q is equals to 1 this is we call as a set condition and if the q is equals to 0 if the q is equals to 0 then this condition is we call as the reset condition if q equals to 1 then it remains in the same state continuously if q equals to 0 then it remains in the same state continuously this property of the one bit memory cell this is the main property of the one bit memory cell and this due to this property it is we call as a latch what we call we call it as a latch latch means the lock the information gets locked so it is we call as a latch okay so the one bit memory cell is we also called as a latch and it is we call as a latch because it locks the information inside it it locks the data so here the three points are the q and q bar are always complement to each other second point is if q is equals to 1 this condition is we call as a set condition if q is equals to 1 then it remains in the same state that state is the set state when q is equals to 0 it is we call as a reset condition and if the q is equals to 0 then it remains in the same same state until we apply the new input but in one bit memory cell there is no provision of application of the input so that's why we have to see the next circuit we have to design the next circuit that circuit is we call as a flip flop that circuit is we call as a flip flop we have the various types of the flip flop but we start from the basic circuit and that basic circuits are the nor gate flip flop and the nand gate flip flop in our next video lecture we will see the nand gate flip flop and the nor gate flip flop if you understood this video lecture then hit the like button subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching this video